Here are some gaming announcements from the recent iPad Showcase. First, two upcoming games were announced. Racing Master was shown on the new iPad 10th Gen. It is a real-time simulation racing game featuring real-world vehicles and tracks for all racing enthusiasts. While I wish Apple previewed the upcoming racer Wreckfest, Racing Master is not a bad option. It's a AAA racer with the visual and physics quality of Grid Autosport, and it comes with Unreal Engine 4 support, custom graphic options, and 60 FPS support. Being free definitely will come with its drawbacks, I'm sure. And while it's being developed by NetEase, a questionable dev at times, I'm super excited that the great Codemasters are collaborating on this too. You know, the people that brought you the F1 games, Grid, Dirt, Project Cars, and so on. Apparently, it cost them hundreds of millions to make. Next is Honkai Star Rail. This game was shown on the new M2 iPad Pro. It is an upcoming free-to-play game by the creators of Genjin Impact. It's a turn-based RPG where you can engage in thrilling and strategic combat. It will feature four playable characters, heaps of worlds to explore, and high-quality visuals that you've come to expect from the Honkai Impact series. This game looks visually impressive, I suppose, but why not show the upcoming No Man's Sky on iPad Pro instead? I'm not really a big fan of these free mobile games and the negative effects they can have on mobile gaming, but Honkai Star Rail does look like a, a good option in terms of showing current iPhone and iPads can do in terms of GPU power. We have new graphic chips to look at. The A14 Bionic in the new iPad 10th gen packs a powerful 6-core CPU, providing a 20% increase over the previous generation. It will also have a 4-core GPU, providing a 10% improvement in graphics performance. 4GB on RAM is now on offer, over 3GB on the last model. This new graphics chip is a huge deal, as it means more demanding AAA titles can now come to every iPad model available right now. Definity Original Sin 2 is only supported on iPads with an A12 or better graphics chip and 4GB of RAM. It's not supported on the 9th gen iPad, but maybe it will work on this new one thanks to more RAM and a better chip. After all, Definity Original Sin 2 is supported on the iPad Air 4th gen, which is basically identical to this new iPad now. Elvarels told me they are looking into supporting this new iPad, but can't confirm any news. The insanely powerful M2 chip now comes to the new 2022 iPad Pro. The 8-core CPU is said to be up to 15% faster than M1, and the 10-core GPU is said to deliver up to 35% faster graphics performance. The M2 chip also features 50% faster unified memory bandwidth over M1 and supports up to 16 gigabytes of fast unified memory. With special entitlement on M1 iPad Pro and M2 iPad Pro, developers can now request more memory for their apps, up from just 5 gigabytes in the past. So 8 gigabyte or 16 gigabyte of memory might sound wonderful for gaming and it is, but there are actually no games on the App Store that require anywhere near 8GB of memory. Heck, even 4GB of memory. For example, Alien Isolation only requires 3GB of RAM on iPhone and iPad. Definity Original Sin 2, the most demanding App Store game, requires 4GB on iPad, and the upcoming Wreckfest will only need 1.3GB of RAM on iPhone and iPad. The M1 iPad Pro was already freaking powerful and could play most high-end games at max graphics settings and a smooth 60 FPS for long play sessions, and some up to 120 FPS with Pro Motion support. If you're interested in Pro Motion, here is a list of iPad Pro games with this support. So in my opinion, picking up the M2 is kind of redundant 
right now until more gaming developers see the full capabilities of what the iPad Pro can do. Hopefully, the upcoming No Man's Sky on iPad can actually show what this M2 chip can do. There is no excuse now on why we can't see literally any Switch game running here, or really any 8th gen console game. I would love to see, and I think it could be possible, The Witcher 3, Dying Light, Tomb Raider 2013, or Dirt Rally. The A15 Bionic now comes to the new Apple TV 4K 3rd gen. The A12 in the last Apple TV wasn't really an improvement over the A10X in the original Apple TV 4K. However, the A15 is promising. It packs a 6-core CPU, which is now up to 50% faster than the previous generation. It also has a 5-core GPU, providing up to 30% faster performance than the previous generation for even smoother gameplay. It will include 4GB of RAM now, over 3GB on the last model. Apple claims the efficiency gains of A15 Bionic eliminate the need for an internal fan. I'm a little scared about the thermal throttling, but we'll have to wait and see. Handy Games told me they most likely would not be able to bring RecFest to the last gen Apple TVs as the game is too big. I'm hoping the new A15 Bionic chip and up to 128GB of storage now means RecFest can race over to Apple TV. Many high-end games run very poorly on the old Apple TVs, especially when compared to iPhone and iPad. For example, on the last gen Apple TV 4K, Dead Cells ran at 30fps, with no high-res toggle. NBA 2K23 only runs at medium settings, and the Pathless runs at lowest graphics with 20 to 30 FPS. It's not good. Many put this down to poor optimization by the developer, but in fact, it's usually because the past Apple TVs had very weak hardware to work with. It's held back by the absence of swappable memory, which is very important, and they have very low storage. Mind you, there were a few talented devs that worked their magic to have no major sacrifices for their games here. Some games that come to mind are Oceanhorn 2, that supports the 60 FPS mode from high-end iPhone and iPads. Beach Buggy Racing 2 is an Apple TV exclusive and runs at max settings. And some games even support 4K resolution, like Asphalt 8. But this kind of optimization was very rare to find. The new Apple TV has me very excited for improved gaming possibilities on Apple TV. Hopefully developers won't have to jump around so many hurdles now. In iPadOS 16, you can use your iPad Pro or iPad Air with your external display. Developers can now choose to implement different full screen external display resolutions. For example, Alvarez told me they will try to look into supporting an external display resolution in the future. A few games on iPad now support mouse and keyboard. I'm sure some of you are aware of this. So this support for external monitors will be excellent. What do you think of the new gaming announcements from the iPad showcase? Are you impressed or disappointed? Will you be upgrading to one of these new products? Let me know in the comments. All in all, not a breakthrough event. I think we're all just waiting for the next Apple Silicon Mac event now. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.